This lesson is on quadratic applications and so we have a couple of examples here. Number one, a small rocket is fired into the air with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second from the edge of a 64 foot high cliff. The vertical distance the rocket travels is described by the quadratic function that's given to us where h is the height of the rocket above the ground in feet and t is the time in seconds since liftoff. So understanding function notation, our input is the t variable which is time in seconds and our output is h of t which is vertical height in feet. So the first question, what is the height of the rocket at time t equals zero seconds? You have your input, so you just plug it in. And you should understand that this answer should make sense. To interpret it, you'd say at zero seconds, the height was 64 feet, and that's what we were told. It's starting off on the edge of a 64 foot high cliff. cliff. Find h of 2 and interpret. Again, function notation that 2 is the input, that's time in seconds, so we'll plug it in. We're going to use our calculator for this. I'll write it down. This is the show my work part. and I get h of 2 equals 96 feet and it says interpret so interpreting just means taking um, the math language and writing a sentence so we'll start with the input this is 2 seconds so at 2 seconds the height was 96 feet next question write the model for the rocket in transformation form. So see we were given standard form. Negative 16 is your A, 48 is your B, 64 is your C, but you want to turn it into, and I'll make it just Y equals transformation form, which is when you have A times X minus H, this binomial squared plus K. And H and K they are the vertex. So we should remember how to find the special x-coordinate called h of the vertex. And we do that by using negative b over 2a. So our special x-coordinate or t-coordinate or in h, the special h, this x-coordinate is going to be negative b, negative 48 over 2 times negative 16, which is 3 halves or 1.5 seconds. Then to find the special k coordinate, that's the output, that's the partner with the h, you just plug that, that back in, that x coordinate back in to find the y coordinate partner for the vertex. I get 100. Okay, so we now have our special x coordinate or our h coordinate and we have our special y coordinate or k. So now we can write it in transformation form and we want to use the right variables. It's the h of t function. Remember a stays a so that's negative 16 parentheses x but in this case our variable is t minus and then our h is 1.5 quantity squared and then our k is 100. So that's the transformation form. Next, how many seconds does it take for the rocket to hit the ground? So this is where a picture can come in handy and you know sometimes I do this at the very beginning, sometimes I wait till now. Um, this is h of t 
this is t. Now every one of the key points can be drawn here. We know it's quadratic and it opens upside down. We know that it starts when t is 0. It starts at a 64 foot high cliff. So we know that it's going to go up and then back down. And we don't need anything but quadrant 1 because time can't be negative and the height's going to stay positive or 0 as well. So we just found the vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. At 1.5 seconds, the height is 100. All right, now this next question says, how many seconds does it take for the rocket to hit the ground? So hit the ground is code for when the height equals 0. So that's right here. So that's asking you to find the x-intercept, the positive x-intercept. And so we're going to take this function, and it's best to use standard form, negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 64 equals h of t, right? Well, we're going to let h of t equal 0. We're going to let the height equal 0. So we're going to solve this quadratic equation, which will give you the x-intercept. So when it says hit the ground, or how long is it in the air, you set this function equal to zero. And we can divide out, looks like we can divide out a four, and the real reason that you want to divide out four and uh, divide out something, in my opinion, is you don't want this a value to be negative. At least I don't. I don't like it to be. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative four, which is legal when you're solving an equation. And so I'm going to get positive 4t squared minus 12t plus or minus 16 equals 0. And that tells me I could have divided out something else since there's another common factor, but that's okay. Its main thing is that that's a positive. So now let's use the quadratic formula. So that is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's going to be t equals negative b, which in this equation that I'm using is positive 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared. A negative 12 quantity squared is the same as 12 squared. That's 144 minus 4 times a, which is 4 times c, which is negative 16, all of that over 2 times a, which is 4. Now, now since that I'm using, this is a word problem, I just, I don't need to worry about the exact answer, I'm just going to get the decimal. So I'm going to put in, the, put this whole square root in, 12 plus the square root, 144 minus 4 times 4 times negative 16 over 8. and I get four seconds. And now that's interesting. See how that's an integer answer? Um, that means I could have factored this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out, but then I'm going to show you that we could have factored it. Um, the quadratic formula works okay. All right, the only thing that I need to do next is go back and change this plus to a minus, and we'll see what we get there. we get negative one second, which we know can't be. So it hits the ground after four seconds. So right here, where I started out by dividing it by negative four, so you notice this will divide out a four again. So if I divide out four again, I'm going to get t squared minus 3t minus 4 equals zero. So we didn't have to use the quadratic factor. Uh, formula because this actually factors into t minus 4, t plus 1 equals 0. And then you set each of these equal to 0 and you get t equals 4 seconds or t equals negative 1 seconds just like we got with the quadratic formula. So either way you can solve these by just using the quadratic formula or if it factors uh, solve it that way. E, what is the maximum height of the rocket that the rocket attains and how many seconds does it take the rocket to reach this maximum height. Well, we've already done that hard work because we found the vertex up here when we were finding the um, 
transformation form and I wrote it up here so we can see the answer to this is the maximum height of the rocket is 100 feet and it took 1.5 seconds to reach that max height. Okay, now this the second thing that this picture is helpful for are these um, increasing or, or uh, decreasing questions and domain questions. So F says what interval of time is the rocket increasing in height? Well, it's increasing in height right here and the x values that are making that happen that starts at 0 and goes to 1.5. And I put a bracket there because it's increasing at that instant uh, and we never put the bracket on the maximum. It's neither increasing or decreasing there. And then the domain, that's the set of x coordinates and that's where you can go back and write this answer here. This was 4 seconds, right? So the domain, the set of x coordinates that work for this function are from 0 to 4. I'll move my paper in a minute. And the range, the, high, the lowest height is 0 and the highest height is 100. So the domain is 0 to 4 and the range is 0 to 100. And all of these values are included in our domain and range. That's why we're going to use brackets. Okay, second example. Suppose you are standing on top of a 300 foot tower and toss a penny up at an, with an initial velocity of 8 feet per second. When the penny comes down, it does not land back on the tower, but it plummets to the ground below. This is the function that models it. And we want to know um, what is the height of the penny at t equals 0 seconds. So again, p of z, 0 you put 0 here and here it goes away is 300 feet. So we'll go ahead and start with our picture and start labeling it. T is our time in seconds. That's our input. P of T is our height and that's in feet. And at 0 seconds we're starting out at 300 feet and it's a quadratic that has a negative so it's going to open upside down. So this is our picture and we're probably going to be asked to find those two spots right there. Uh, but before we do that it says find P of 1 and interpret. So I'm going to show my work. I'm going to plug 1 in for T. And the math isn't too hard but I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. So negative 16 times 1 squared that's negative 16 plus 8 times 1, that's 8, plus 300, that's 292 feet. And then it says interpret. So at 1 second, the height of the penny is 292 feet. Then it says write the model for the penny in transformation form. Again, transformation form is y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. So we already know our A is negative 16. Our H, or our special X coordinate of the vertex, is found by using negative B over 2A. So this is A, this is B, and that's C. So our special X coordinate is negative 8 over 2 times negative 16. So if we do that, negative 8 over 2 times negative 16 and we get 1 fourth or 0.25 and that's our x coordinate so that's seconds. To find the y coordinate partner for that we just plug it in so we can go here and plug it in p of 0.25 is negative 16 times 0.25 quantity squared plus 8 times 0.25 plus 300. Okay, so we'll use our calculator. So we have 301 feet. So 
transformation form, we replace the A, the H, and the K, and we're going to use the right letters. So this function is a P of T function. A is negative 16. T minus 0.25 quantity squared plus 301 is transformation form. And what that means is that this vertex is 0.25, 301. Okay, so we can skip D and just answer these questions. When is the penny at its highest point? Well, it's 301 is the highest point, but it happens at 0.25 seconds. What is the maximum height? We just found it. That's 301 feet. Okay, so now back to D. How long is the penny in the air? Again, this is our penny. This is the vertical height of the penny, and it's in the air until it hits the ground. So this question is asking us to find this x-intercept when the height is zero. So again, what we'll do is we'll take this equation or this function and we'll set the height equal to zero. And again, you can divide out whatever you need to. I definitely don't want that 16 to be negative. So uh, 300 divided by 16 doesn't go in there perfectly. 300 divided by 8 doesn't go in there perfectly. 300 divided by 4 does. So I'm going to divide everybody by negative 4. And that's going to give me positive 4t squared minus 2t. And then 300 divided by negative 4 is minus 75. And we could try to factor that. I don't think it does. Let's just go ahead and use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So t equals positive 2, because b is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 75 all over 2 times a, which is 4. Okay, now again, since it's a word problem, I don't care if I get a decimal answer. I would if it were just an algebra problem without a word problem attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the whole thing in with the radical and everything. So 2 plus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 4 times negative 75 over 8 and I get 4.59 seconds. Round it to the hundredths place. And let's just check the other one so you can see again what it is that's happening here. This quadratic has two answers. It's just in context this negative answer doesn't make any sense because you can't have a negative time. It, it's over here though in our graph. But we only care about the positive answer. All right, so, so let's write that down. So it hits the ground after 4.59 seconds. All right, and then G, what is the interval of time the height of the penny is decreasing? Well, the, pen, the function, the height's decreasing right there, and the x values that are making that happen are, starts decreasing at 0.25 and stops decreasing when it hits the ground. So 0.25 comma 4.59 is your interval where it's decreasing. You put a bracket there if you want because technically we go on. It doesn't, I'm not going to count wrong on that, but either one. All right, so the domain and range, the brackets and parentheses do matter. So the domain is the set of x coordinates that are the real world x um, coordinates that are making this uh, penny go in the air and then go down. And it starts at 0 seconds and it stops at 4.59 seconds. Now there's actually a point here and here, so that's why you would include those endpoints there. And then the range is the set of y coordinates. The lowest y height you have is 0, the highest height you have is 301. And those points are included in the graph, so those would be brackets.